I'm your host, Riem Zin Labidin, and you are listening to Tech Tag Podcast. Today, our guest is Merlin Göttlinger. He's working on his PhD thesis in theoretical computer science. He worked in different companies using different programming languages, and he's enthusiastic about functional programming. Let's meet him and learn more about his journey. Hello, Merlin. Welcome to Tech Tech. Hi, yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm happy to have you here and thanks for your time. To know you more and to break the ice with the audience, tell us a fun fact about yourself. Yeah, one, one f fun fact about uh, myself is that besides uh, being a computer scientist and, and programmer, I also have a love for, for insects and uh, small insects like millipedes and The other critters many people find disgusting and taking macro photo photographs of them uh, i i find those i find those quite cute uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so besides other people would be disgusted if there is a spider or a bug in the in their apartment and i'm excited and pull out my camera <laughs> <laughs> I saw your pictures in uh, Instagram and there are some, so many different types of insects that I didn't know they existed, the colors and like, it's interesting. <laughs> and there are even more insects where no pictures exist because we don't even know them yet. <laughs> wow. Even I really get scared of insects, but I enjoy uh, seeing your pictures. Thank you. So uh, tell us how... Uh, did you get to the computer science major? Yeah, I got uh, to study in computer science uh, by going to the job center uh, when we were about to finish our, our school. Uh, they went to the job center with everyone and they had these questionnaire wizard kind of things in the computer where you answer a bunch of questions and then they suggest possible career paths that fit your interests basically. And I checked there that I don't want to deal with people being an introvert. Uh, and then uh, it said, well, maybe computer science is the right thing for you. <laughs> and computer science, I was able to study nearby. So I went with that. And uh, by now, I think I, I would enjoy dealing more with people. And for example, teaching, uh, I enjoy quite the transfer of knowledge, is something which is important to me. So I don't know how. <laughs> How, how great that suggestion was based on that fact, but in, uh, I guess it was a good su su suggestion because I, I enjoy programming and the like. So Nice. So you, you like it, programming and computer science along the way when you started it and learned more about it, right? Yeah, basically the first time I, I programmed a computer is when I, uh, in the first programming course in, in university. So I wasn't really doing anything with computers before that, apart from using them, uh, playing around with them, photoshopping images, playing around with them as a child. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. And uh, during your studies or um, during your internships, maybe as a working student, tell us about some learning experience uh, Is there some challenges? Mm -hmm. So uh, my my so at first I, I just worked as an office personnel, basically uh, nothing to do with computer science, but was basically my first job and got used to working. And then uh, after a year or so, I, I, I switched to a programming job where I was the only programmer. Uh, the other colleagues were uh, administrators and I was basically writing writing tools for them, small tools to help them administering the machines. And at this job, it was, it, it was a, a big learning experience for me because given that I was basically still learning all, all, all the programming stuff and given that I was the only programmer there and I mean, the administrators uh, can do a bit of scripting and I'm sure some administrators also can program, but though they 
were basically doing their thing and I uh, and said, well, we need a tool that does this. And then it was up to me to figure out how to achieve this. So basically I was hired to do something which I felt I had no idea how to do, but I had I was confident that somehow I, I probably will manage to do it. And then uh, the result of that was that I learned loads of stuff because I, I had to learn everything uh, which I needed to, to program the things uh, I programmed. So besides getting practical uh, experience programming, I, I, got, I learned the important lesson that it isn't so important to know uh, how to do something, but to know how to help yourself, where to look, what to look for. And then you will probably get through it and learn a lot along the way. So this uh, was, it, it gave me a lot of confidence in, in my ability to, to solve problems, basically. And so I can recommend everyone in the same situation to be, be strong and, and carry through such, such obstacles. And, and in the end, if you manage to get through it, you, you, will, be, you have, will have learned much. Yeah, this is great. Without any guidance, you learn it by yourself. And uh, I guess you started to look for what you need uh, exactly yeah. uh, to achieve and then uh, started to look to the documentation of the, the stuff that yeah much much going through the microsoft documentation and many many stack overflow questions read <laughs> i'm grateful to the people who are asking questions and get answers without them <laughs> many times uh, stack overflow uh, helped me yeah Although I must say nowadays, I, I rarely go on Stack Overflow. So uh, in my experience, uh, Stack Overflow tends to be more helpful with uh, imperative uh, object-oriented languages and, and less relevant uh, for, for functional languages. Or maybe it's an experience thing. I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly, but I, I had the feeling that when with functional programming, most of the time I, I could get uh, my my answer by by thinking about the code and looking at it hard enough, basically. Uh, whereas when working imperatively back in the day, I, uh, it was much more confusing to me and, and weird why things happen the way they happen. And how did you get to functional programming? Yeah, basically. I, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a perfectionist or, or curious. I don't know. I always try to, to optimize things. And, and I always, I always uh, was looking what, what else is there. Because at, at, in the bachelor studies, we, we learned C Sharp. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, one of the big uh, object-oriented languages. Uh, and, and I thought to myself, well, what else is there? Is, is this it? Is this as good as it gets? Or are there other ways to solve problems? Are there possibly better ways to solve problems? And that's uh, how I got looking at, at Java at first. But I mean, Java and C Sharp are pretty similar. And then uh, I, I, t I started, uh, then the bachelor studies at some point started to bore me, basically. So uh, I, I started to... Uh, to taking online courses on, on, on these online course platforms. Mm -hmm. And there uh, I took the Scala course uh, from Martin Odersky. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really how I got into functional programming. So at first with Scala, obviously. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, and that's uh, then also about the time where, where I, I switched companies and this was uh, again uh, a similar so it was so in the bachelor studies we we had to do an internship for a semester basically mm -hmm. and i took that as opportunity to uh, switch companies and try something different and then after after this internship i continued there as a student worker basically and there again i was uh, the the only programmer in in, uh, in a team of non-programmer, but computer science people mm -hmm. uh, or IT people. And there I, I had even more freedom. They were all like, well, this, the, the tool should do this. Choose your programming language, choose everything. Uh, we don't know it anyway. And so uh, <laughs> that's where I started programming in Scala then. I, I don't know how well that went for them because after, when, when I left in the end, they needed someone to take on my work. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't hire a Scala programmer, but yeah. <laughs> and 
Yeah, and that's also something I, I, I recommend to everyone who's working while they're studying, switch companies often. Uh, while you're studying, nobody uh, will look at your CV afterwards and, and think badly of you because you switch companies a lot. Uh, it's, it's basically the, the one opportunity where you can switch companies every half year and, and nobody will care. Uh, and this gives you the opportunity to see multiple companies and reflect upon what aspects uh, of working at that company you enjoyed and which uh, you were missing. Because, at least for, for me, uh, I, I didn't know that. Uh, every time I switched companies, there were things where I thought to myself, well, they were nicer at the last empl employer, but other things are nicer here and, and other things I, I was missing are now uh, more fulfilled. So. That's that's the one opportunity, I, I think, where you can easily try to explore different uh, different companies and see what you enjoy, what you want. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, how uh, did your journey in functional programming uh, continue it? Yeah, then, then I, I switched uh, company again when my bachelor, uh, well, okay, well, my bachelor thesis, I switched companies again, but internally in the company before, but just in a, in a, in a, into a research group for, to do my bachelor thesis. And there I, I did C++, but in, in the research group, you can't start introducing new languages <laughs> as a student yeah. all of a sudden. Uh, <laughs> but also this uh, was a completely different field. So there I did image processing before I did more, more user facing uh, applications and there, then I did uh, computer vision basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I hated C++, uh, I hated it <laughs> because I, I was used to Scala and and then I, I, all, I always on the weekends I needed to do a bit of Scala programming, basically <laughs> to to compensate for for the horrible C plus plus code I have written, uh, in in part because I'm not a C plus plus programmer and in part because my thinking was already centered around Scala and the power it gives me to have my code look exactly how I want it to look, uh, which I, I I didn't have in C plus plus, or at least not in, in a nice enough way that I'm doing it and company guidelines, uh, which were very old school, how to name things, how to write things, which were very much not in line with how I, how I wanted to write things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and from then from there, I switched companies again <laughs> uh, to a company where, where, I, where I met you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and which where, where they hired me as a Scala programmer and were happy that there are Scala programmers in the area they could hire because <laughs> It's not that easy. Yeah. <laughs> or at least back then it wasn't that easy. And there I then continued uh, trying to optimize uh, my, my Scala programming and also started uh, a master studies in, in Erlangen. And there it drew me more and more towards the, the mathematical abstractions from category theory and, and all those libraries which have monads and factors all over the place. And I got deeper and deeper into that <laughs> at some point, uh, realizing that people just say, well, yeah, your complicated math stuff, nobody understands that anyway, don't use that. And I got a bit frustrated from that. And also I got frustrated because many of these abstractions, which, which seem nice to me, uh, seem nice to me and still seem, uh, still are nice for me, uh, you pay for in, in performance, sadly, in Scala, because I mean, Scala is on top of the JVM. Yeah. I don't know, maybe that uh, that has got better with later for versions. I don't know. But back then you you paid for your nice math abstractions in readability and uh, performance. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, you can only take that so far before people say, well, no, don't do that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, I remember when uh, I worked with you, I was impressed about your contribution at the project and uh, I asked you uh, for a workshop. Uh, I remember that you were enthusiastic about functional programming and also inspired me. You were a, re a reason to uh, attend my first conference, Scala conference. You encouraged me to do it. Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad it helped you, and I inspired you, and I I hope I can inspire your listeners. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, joining joining conference, be, being active in the community, joining chat rooms, trying to help people, even if you're if you're not uh, if you don't fully know things yourself, just replying to people and and saying, well, I mean, you you, you shouldn't you shouldn't act as if if you know exactly what you're doing if you don't know what you're doing, but just trying to help people and other people will correct you, and sometimes you can help people even if you don't fully understand things and and do your part in the community, and I guess then with time people will recognize your name and you will somehow be part of the community and, and learn from the community and then you have nice interactions hopefully at the conferences with the community and i think this is also very motivating and a great learning resource yeah. and also with the workshop you mentioned uh I always try to 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 pass on this this uh, this not this knowledge about these these mathematical things and and the like because I I really believe that that they help and they help to write uh, correct code and and I was always a bit frustrated with, with people not understanding them and I thought to myself well you need to if I, maybe if I explain it maybe then they they will understand and maybe then they will see the true way to program yeah <laughs> basically <laughs> and. Uh, and and also I, I really like uh, passing on knowledge, teaching people. So the whole time, in parallel to my bachelor's uh, bachelor studies, I, I gave uh, free free help to other students in in all the courses, basically, uh, which had also had the benefit of of preparing me for for my exams. Because if you explain to another student uh, the whole material then you have your learning done basically <laughs> yeah, that's awesome <laughs> yeah so yeah I, I really like teaching though I, I could also see myself in a consulting company at some point teaching people programming a bit i don't know maybe, maybe this will be my career path in the end <laughs> oh that would be great yeah yeah but but uh, so then then getting frustrated with these math mathematical abstractions and the price you pay in, in Scala and, and also my my, uh, my my master studies uh there then uh, so originally I started my master studies on on IT security and computer vision and and computer graphics and and all those things but I, I then got got frustrated with with those communities because they don't or at least they didn't back in the back then use functional programming and and i i felt the programming styles to, to be so so outdated and and not fit for for how i think i guess people think diff in different ways and then different programming languages are a good f fit for how they think and for me functional programming is it's how I think. So, so this is how I want to solve things. And if the whole community does it doesn't do it that way, then you will have a hard time, yeah. basically. <laughs> so, which which is why I then moved toward the theoretical computer side, uh, theoretical computer science side of things, and and uh, looked on on the mathematical side of all these mathematical abstractions, trying to understand them, going to all the lectures from the chair of theoretical computer science. At some point also, uh, I started working for, for the chair as a tutor for, for an introductory logic course. And there I, I also uh, did other programming languages like, um, like Koch and, and Akda and Idris, mm -hmm. uh, which people might not be familiar with. So those are at least, yeah, at least then there were the, the three main programming languages uh, that I knew of that uh, have dependent types. Mm -hmm. So I uh, think of uh, generics where you can parameterize types over types. Now you can parameterize types over values like integers. So the, the classic example is vectors of a fixed length where you can mm -hmm. then where you then write vector of five basically basically and then you know it has exactly five elements and these kind of things are the classic example and uh, they were using them mostly uh, for proving things so formalizing proofs uh, and that's then also what where i did my my master thesis in formalizing things but by then I was so far in, in the functional programming and theoretic side of things that I thought to myself, well, I will finish my master soon and, and, and what then? 
I mean, <laughs> I, I was, uh, I had left Scala behind me because it wasn't theoretically enough for, for my thinking, but I, I wasn't familiar enough with uh, programming languages that, uh, that work this way, like, like Haskell. Mm -hmm. So I thought to myself, well, what do now? And I, I looked a bit around for, for jobs and then I, I saw some jobs that were, I would call them uh, near scientific industry. Like for example, the, the guys at, at Facebook uh, making verification tools or type systems on top of JavaScript and stuff like that, which uses current theoretical research and, and applies them to, to make tools helping, helping programmers. And I thought to myself, well, this, this is something I could see myself doing writing tools to making people more productive because this fits with my my whole thing of optimizing things and making things better um, and those jobs said well it would be nice if you have a phd degree and i see seen a bunch of these job offers that say well it would be nice if you have a phd degree and then i said, thought to myself well my masters will be finished soon Maybe I should do a PhD degree if that is what this job <laughs> would like to see, and and if not, at least it gives me time to to uh, to, to further my studying a bit and to get a bit more into Haskell and and other more practice oriented programming language that fit my thinking. Uh, so I thought, well, this is a good idea. I do a PhD thesis, and and, and after this, I, I will have a degree, hopefully. <laughs> And, uh, and and at least I will have more experience uh, with these with the languages I, I can see myself working in. Yeah, so so that's what I'm currently doing, and I'm not really working there on on programming as such, but I'm doing I'm dealing with logic. Mm -hmm. So uh, more concretely, the project I'm I'm working in uh, is trying to analyze Twitter. So we we tr we, we take uh, we, we try to extract arguments from Twitter uh, for for certain topics. So basically, getting uh, what wh how do people argue for 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 or against certain points, and how do those arguments uh, interact with one another, and trying to process the, these in an automated way, together with uh, computational linguists, which do the language processing, and I'm basically doing the the formalities we parse into. And, and the logics we represent the arguments in to reason about them then. So that's what I'm currently doing. Interesting. And if we if we need software written for that, I try to do it in Haskell to get a bit of experience there. Mm -hmm. But that's where I'm at in my career. <laughs> that's cool. And this analysis is um, like, you are not programmatically doing it. There is a software for it or how it is? Yeah, there, there uh, we so so most of the language processing nowadays is done with machine learning, mm -hmm. and uh, what we are doing is is different because uh, on social media you probably know it. You have a lot of abbreviations and bad grammar and spelling mistakes, and you have on Twitter you have these short messages uh, which are sometimes even hard to understand as a human and even harder to understand for a machine learning algorithm. So uh, what we are doing is basically we the the idea behind our project is to say well you have certain uh, patterns in, in in or figures of speech which uh, correspond to a certain uh, a certain logical formula being expressed with placeholders basically mm -hmm. and so the idea is uh, we have these linguistic queries which are a bit like like regular expressions with added linguistic annotations and the idea is that those are general enough to are not topic dependent so you can write these to detect certain meanings thereby capturing the human language understanding in these handwritten queries which can then hopefully identify uh, these informations in the tweet yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very interesting. So you are doing your uh, PhD? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've been doing this for, for three and a half years or something now. Yeah. And uh, how much left or how long? Well, <laughs> 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 uh, 
that, that's a question you, you won't you don't want to ask phd student like how, how is it going when are you finished <laughs> those are the questions you don't want to ask uh, <laughs> but i i hope to be finished uh Uh, at the end of 2023 or the beginning 2024. Mm -hmm. That's the timeline I, I have in mind. Uh, viel Erfolg. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> you have a dream job or you are um, going with the flow? Mm -hmm. So in, in, in part uh, going with the flow, but I have a, a few ideas where, where I could see myself going. Mm -hmm. So one idea is what I said, these research, these close to research tool programming things or uh, doing formal verification of some kind, thereby applying these theoretical results to uh, prove properties instead of testing uh, and The other possibility I see myself as something teaching related and and programming work with functional programming. So basically either as a teacher for, for some kind of teaching institution or uh, as, as for a consulting firm. So these, I guess the consulting firm would probably be nice there because it has a mix of programming and teaching. Mm -hmm. And I think this is something to enjoy. And, and these are both things which I've noticed. I, I get into flow where I, I completely lose, lose the time and, and uh, it's not exhausting for me. <laughs> so these possibly are the things I should be doing. <laughs> If I remember correctly, uh, you, did you organize a meetup in Erlangen? If I remember correctly or... Am I wrong? I... Yes, I, 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 I'm, I am officially still running, and I, but it's more if I was running the Emacs, Emacs meetup around the Emacs text editor in, in Erlangen. Mm -hmm. uh, but it somehow didn't really take off. So we didn't get the critical mass of, of speakers to keep it going. And currently we are on pause basically until until someone has a topic because we, we try to do uh, monthly meetings with, mm -hmm. with talks, but yeah, we, we were only a handful of people and there were most of the time there was, was four or five atten people attending and one speaker. And I mean, you can only hold so many talks for, for this small amount with this small amount and for this small amount of people before you, you have to, to work hard to find a topic. And yeah, so currently it's on pause, but I was, uh, I am the organizer <laughs> of mm -hmm. that meetup basically. And I was giving, uh, sometimes I was giving talks in the, uh, uh, in the functional programming, uh, meetup in, in Nuremberg, mm -hmm. but this somehow died during the Corona pandemic, it seems. I've, I've written the organizer a few times if we should meet again some sometime. I mean, they pay, they're paying meet up every month. So mm -hmm. I would think they are <laughs> interested in continue it, but, and they always, they, it, all, it always says, yeah, yeah, let, let's do it again. But somehow it doesn't happen then. Yeah. But especially yeah. <laughs> with the COVID situation, yeah. it became more challenging. Yeah. I think many, Some meetups use the opportunity to uh, go online and have uh, listeners and speakers from everywhere suddenly. Uh, and some meetups, they didn't go online and yeah, and are not happening anymore. I, I hope that at some point those meetups will continue because I quite liked to have a local functional programming meetup. Yeah. What do you think um, the reason uh, why they... Like there isn't there isn't a lot of attendees, or uh, is it about the um, like advanced level of um, the talks, or what do mm. you think? Uh, so for the Emacs meetup, yeah, mm. I guess uh, in part. Uh, is that not every Emacs user is trying to connect and or even know about our meetup uh, because the intersection between... So we originally started on the meetup platform, 
for to basically use their uh, I mean, you, you pay for, for them advertising your thing, basically, mm -hmm. right? So <laughs> so we ori originally started there, but uh, I don't know if, you know, do you know Emacs? Uh, I heard about it, but uh, yeah, I didn't try it. Yeah, so, so it's basically a, a text editor from the 80s, mm -hmm. <laughs> which yeah. is still around and, and still has, uh, has groups of people which uh, enjoy it. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, But those are... are <laughs> Oftentimes, those are the open source hardliner people, uh, which are very privacy concerned and, and hate the closed source stuff. And, uh, and they are not that fond of the meetup platform, which is closed source and commercial for profit and the like. So, uh, so I think we didn't reach many of, of the, the knowledgeable people there. Uh, And then, in part, uh, most of the people nowadays seem to use VS Code, and uh, and not that many people in total use this old text editor, and even less in, in the area here, right? So, finding enough people for this uh, for such an obscure topic uh, is an issue, I think. Yeah, I think that people who are using Veeam uh, often would use uh, also Emacs, right? Well, Or, it's, uh, it's more that there's a, a war, which editor <laughs> is the better one, and <laughs> if Emacs is better or Vim is better, and, and people seem to hate, hate one another. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I thought uh, it's the same people no. <laughs> who are... Uh... <laughs> no. There, there are some people which, which switched or, or which, which are using both, But I get I get the feeling that it's it's mostly a, a war of faith. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, are there um, uh, recorded sessions, uh, videos for uh, the talks there, or it is uh, just live talk and then without uh, having video? No, it, it was all uh, just live. Uh, for for some talks, we have uh, the slides in in a Git repo, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the time, we just it was just live, yeah. Yeah, I see. It's cool um, to you are having uh, the meetup so that people can learn, and you are trying also to to teach about functional programming in different uh, meetups. Yeah. So sometimes I, I I get the urge to to teach someone something about functional programming and and yeah I I miss that sometimes and and then. Sometimes I, I approach companies <laughs> so uh, to talk in their internal meetup things and teach them. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but that that's cool. But uh, but then again, somehow I I feel like I, I'm giving them free free consulting work where other people get paid for. This is challenging. <laughs> how to start? To um, I mean, you promote your workshop with a specific price, but it is it is a big step. Uh, <laughs> uh, you are given uh, your time and uh, uh, some materials, and you teach people. Yeah. So um, yeah, so I, I have no problems with, with talking at, at meetups and, and teaching people there because there it's a free event for everybody and basically giving to the to the community yeah. but talking at, at an internal company thing always feels a bit off then, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> uh to wrap up uh, what advice would you give to your younger self is or maybe also for people uh, an advice for uh, the listeners mm -hmm. so i i would advise everybody basically to Uh, to reflect uh, on their on, on their jobs uh, and 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 think what aspects of the job were nice what aspects would you think you would like to have or, or you know you would like to have because you had it in previous uh, previous experiences and now don't have it anymore and then think about what what is important for you and and what and and try so when you're still studying you can you have the, the option to to change companies and, and try a bunch of different things and see if your predictions what you uh, think you will enjoy uh, actually match up with, with what you really enjoy and uh, apart from that 
one mistake I made and realized too late <laughs> was uh, the point in my bachelor studies where I got bored. Uh, where, where I thought to myself, well, this is going too slow. I would like to, to have it go faster. Uh, and I found it too easy. And this was this should have been the point where I switched universities to a, a different university because uh, it was a te technische Hochschule. Uh, and while the, the bachelor master system uh, doesn't distinguish between university and and those institutions. In in my experience, uh, the way they teach things is is different. So my experience was that uh, there we basically learned the gist of things, uh, and this was uh, this was all that was needed in in the exams, and this probably suffices when when working uh, and, and when programming, but. Uh, then during my my bachelor thesis, I, I, I found that, that found it difficult to to do to read the papers and and the science stuff because I only ever, ever learned the gist of things and not the the, the depth of the theory. And then uh, at university, it was the other way around. Basically, we we learned everything to the to to depth and it was complicated as hell and it was difficult. And I was sure in my first semester that there won't be a second uh, and and that I will never pass this. And I was in uni I was at university from seven in the morning to seven in the evening, uh, <laughs> all the time studying, working on the assignments and everything. And it was extremely hard. And it was even harder because uh, I didn't have uh, the knowledge they were taught in their bachelor's degree, which was much more than than we were taught. Although their exams then only require you to understand the gist of things. Uh, it helps you greatly when you look at the paper and at least have heard the depth of things. Mm -hmm. So my my advice is if you if you feel that your university or whatever is too easy to look if there is a harder variant of what you're doing because you need to challenge yourself to get the maximum learning basically from the time because I feel many many things so. so especially the theoretical things I feel are things which you either learn in university or you probably won't learn them on your own. So yeah. at least that's how it goes for me. These, these very theoretical side of things, I, I have trouble teaching them to myself, basically, like teaching myself a programming language where, which I can do practically and things, this, this works fine. But yeah, so much of the theories, things I think you'll, well, you learn in university or you don't. And then if your university seems to be too easy, you should possibly see if there is a harder one, which learns you which, where you will learn more things. Yeah. Um, Makes sense. But yeah, re reflect on things. And also I think teaching people helps because if you explain things, you yourself get, uh, have to think about it and you, you deepen your understanding of the concepts and, and everything. So and and it's nice for the community as a whole if if you pass on your knowledge to other people. Yeah. Thanks for the valuable advice, and I enjoyed talking to you. Thanks for uh, your time. Yeah. Thanks again for having me, <laughs> and I hope the people listening will also enjoy it. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I learned a lot from Merlin in the past and also from our conversation today. My friends, I hope that you enjoyed today's episode and that you got inspired from the learning experience of Merlin. I'm looking forward to our next episode with a new guest and a new inspiring story. Until then, stay safe and stay tuned to our next episode. Tic-tac. Tackle the inspiration.